Tonight, from Gregory Dowd's Field at either Martin Stadium, ESUWarriors.com proudly presents to you a presentation of ESU Lacrosse Seniors. Good evening, everybody. I'm Nikolai Busco. Thank you for joining us under some unusual circumstances, though I think unusual would be a good word to describe the last year, to say the least. Uh, for those who are totally unaware of what has happened, ESU tonight was supposed to play Millersville in a senior night game here at the stadium. Unfortunately, yesterday afternoon, Millersville's athletic department announced the cancellation of the women's lacrosse season. We wish the Marauders well. We hope that everybody recovers that's been affected. We hope they have good health, and we look forward to seeing them back here next season. In the meantime, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. We're still going to have a senior night where the program is going to honor all of the graduating seniors as well as welcome back a couple of others who didn't have this opportunity last year. And then the Warriors are actually going to have a very spirited inter-squad scrimmage that will be ahead of Saturday's road game at Shepherd. And joining us, of course, to talk about what this season has been like, a season like no other, is the ESU head coach of the women's lacrosse program, Zina Barakos Yoder. Zina, thanks for joining us. Uh, can you just explain what it's been like the last 24 hours going from uh, a senior night to essentially plan B? Yeah, well, some would say plan C, I guess. Um, I think we're just rolling with the punches. Um, the girls have handled all sorts of change this season um, with a positive attitude, and I think that contributes to our success is that, okay, we're here, we're grateful for every day and grateful for the opportunity, so we're excited to be here tonight and glad that um, the athletic department, along with you and the rest of the staff, were able to put this together for us. Sandy, please take us back to a year ago at this time where nobody really knew much of anything. Could you have envisioned... For example, any semblance of a competitive season like your team has had this year? Um, you know, it was a question mark. It, at first, it was like, of course, we'll be back to normal by this point. Of course, right? Because in the moment, it was so um, strange and foreign to us that something like this was even happening. Um, you know, we had just come off a big game against Lindenwood, and um, we were awaiting to play a game. And... Adelphi, actually, <laughs> which we were always very excited to play. And um, it came as a sudden halt, and um, the team has just, like I said, handled it, and here we are today. And, of course, this Saturday, your team and almost every other spring team will be in action, and football actually returns to Ida Martin Stadium for the Red and Black game. How close does life feel back to normal here on campus, you think? <laughs> Um, it is a little less lively, as uh, most of campus is made up of mostly athletes, um, which is fun and spirited and lots of support to each other during our games or scrimmages that everyone has had. But it's definitely a little quieter around here, but we're excited to go back to full force this fall. Your seniors have been in full force this season. Have they met your expectations as far as leadership in that group this season? Of course. Um, this is one of, you know, I mean, it's you'll see the starting lineup is mostly all seniors. And um, it's not just about who's the captain, but it goes beyond that as we return three starters from last season to come back for their fifth year. We have a large normal senior normal senior class in, in part with that. But they've done nothing but be positive and, and uh, followed the coach's lead on everything that we've asked. So we're excited. Tatiana Petaway is one of those who came back for that last season. She is now 10th all-time in D2 number of saves. Could you envision this type of performance when she walked on campus? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, she was our secret weapon from the beginning. Um, <laughs> Tatiana didn't really play club ball. Um, she came because she was friends um, with a senior or a, a past player, Carrie Mulcahy. And Carrie's like, we got to get this girl. She's so good. And I'm like, okay. She came to a prospect day. And I was like, we got to wrap this up before someone else knows about Tatiana Petaway. And she has just become an amazing young woman and developed so much as a goalie and she is going to be hard to say goodbye to at the end of the year um, but we are so proud of her and all that she's accomplished and she's an amazing goalie and I think um, as she was a preseason All-American um, that she's the best goalie in Division II lacrosse. Hannah Cicerell continues climbing up the ladder for the program record in point. She is now nine behind in order to take that. What has life been like having her and could you envision this type of production from her from start to finish? Yeah, um, Hannah's just really, you know, as the girls would say, popped off this year. Um, she has been so consistent, and we are just thrilled that she's back. I mean, it's funny because when this all happened, I was like, it would be, when I started recruiting this freshman class, I was like, I, the dream team would be have to bring back a couple of girls from last year's senior class, including Tatiana and Hannah and Madison, and them to play with the seniors this year and then the freshmen that we had coming in. And it, it's, I guess I maybe I willed it into, into life, but um, it's been more than wonderful having Hannah and Tat and Madison back, and they have just excelled all of my expectations. 
I feel like the torch is being passed within the family. Krista Mitter Rotonda has done so much here over the course of her time as a warrior, but what can you say not only about her, but the first year sister, Emily, what she has done, I mean, can, can you just explain what it was like just finally landing Emily? W was yeah. it a hard thing to do? Uh, yes. I mean, Emily was actually uh, verbally committed to another school. There was a coaching change, and it was during her um, spring season of lacrosse. Uh, she was in playoffs and, um, in New Jersey, and I was like, hmm. I need to drive to New Jersey. So I went and watched your playoff game. I waited. Uh, it was a rain delay. Krista told me the wrong time of the game. So I was there for like two hours early, just sitting, waiting. And then I watched her game and, you know, had a great conversation with her and, and you know, just talked about how important it was to continue the legacy that Krista had started. Um, and, it, I mean, they're different players, as you can see when they play, but that legacy is something that can continue through Emily. And we're very excited that – we have Emily and Krista, and we've actually had a bunch of sisters. Um, we have a lot of pairs. We have uh, Mary Fitzsimmons, who's the third of a sisters. We've had, I've had all three sisters through the program. We've had the Campbell sisters, um, Sarah and Hannah. So I think that that just speaks to our program and what we do here and how we truly are a warrior family. I want to make sure I have this quote correct. It, it came before the first game of the season. It was in reference to sophomores who really hadn't played here last season and some freshmen who arrived in the fall and some freshmen that arrived in January. Yeah. This is what you said. I think we have three different groups that we're trying to implement into the team and find their place and build chemistry with. Do you now feel like you have that cohesive group of underclassmen to take the torch from the seniors that are leaving after whenever the season ends? I got goosebumps. Um, yes, 100%. Uh, like I said, those three different groups have bring different dynamics, but they've definitely molded into the team, and they've had an opportunity to really only be around each other, you know, in limited groups and massed, of course. Um, but that has given them an opportunity to build, and they don't have many other outside distractions. It really just is about the team, and we've been able to build on that. And even the group that got here just in January, they're part of this team, and that's very um, evident in everything that we do. What are the things you've learned through the pandemic as a coach, not just as a recruiter, but also building those interpersonal relationships with the players? Yeah, it's definitely been different. You know, uh, I'm the coach, as Dr. Gray can attest to, uh, is probably the loudest in the hallway. Where there's always girls in and out. We keep a snack bin, thankfully filled by the parents. Um, we, we, I love building that chemistry off the field with them and knowing what's going on with them and helping them be better young women and lacrosse players. And that's been different. Um, you know, it's staying a little later after practice. It's coming a little early. Um, the bus is important. All, all these different times that we can find five minutes with them is so much more valuable. Um, I have found that we've just had to adapt, um, and that has hard because I'm a planner. I like to plan, you know, um, as Noah can attest to, my plan for pregame, my plan for this, my plan for travel is always, like, down to the minute. And as you can tell of what we're doing here tonight, sometimes we have to adapt. And that is something that not only I have to learn, but the girls have to learn, too, because as they go off into the world as young women and get jobs, they're going to have to adapt. Every day is different, and we just roll with the punches. We have a couple of things to share with people about the women's lacrosse program that maybe they are not aware of. Big news came out earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, everything's blending together, that Ida Martin Stadium will host games in the NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Tournament. How proud are you of your program, the athletic department, and the institution as a whole, and this stadium that... No matter what happens, this place is going to have some high-quality lacrosse come next month. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, yeah, kudos to the athletic department for putting the bid together. Um, kudos to the team for hopefully putting themselves in the position to be playing, <laughs> obviously. Um, but we just need to work hard and uh, get the opportunity to showcase ourselves in our home field. There's something else that people may not be aware of, and uh, it's been a work in progress. The team will have a game at Shepherd on Saturday. The final regular season game will be on Wednesday against Shippensburg. But it's not going to be here. It's going to be at White Knight. The new turf is ready. So how does it not only satisfy you as a coach having a good place to play, but how does it help your overall recruiting? You now have something to show young ladies looking to play. Yeah, so another kudos to the athletic department. We now have a brand new locker room within the last year and now brand new turf, um, which is so exciting. Uh, we used to call it a Lake White Night every time it rained. We had a bit of a drainage issue, but um, we're excited, uh, so excited to be going back down home. Um, I would say I, it's uh, very distracting up here. I don't mind practicing up here. I love playing games up here, but there's a lot going on. Sometimes track practice, you know, football, uh, all these sorts of things are going on but we're excited to go home and play on our new field and um yeah we're excited 
You've got a couple of games left. What is going to be the focus as you get ready for the first round of the playoffs and presumably the opponent being Bloomsburg? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's playing a team three times is is different. So um, something that we're adjusting to going back to an east-west schedule this is our first time playing it out this whole season. So um, we're just going to worry about ourselves, and that's how we're going to move into playoffs and hopefully further. As for Westchester, you might see them again soon. How close? <laughs> what do you have to do? It seemed like you almost had them last week. Yeah, we um, we almost did, but we didn't. So uh, hopefully we'll get them when it counts. Is this going to be the toughest season you think you'll ever have in your career? Oh, I hope. I hope it'll get easier from here. <laughs> well, I, I'll just simply say this. It's been great having you. And just, you know, I want to talk again about the, the definition you talked about earlier with so many sisters coming together, family. What does the word family seem to mean to this program? Oh, it resonates with all of us. It's important. You know, the girls have been through um, – there and back this year, um, you know, losing, um, you know, a fellow athlete in the athletic department, you know, actually right before our, la our first Westchester game, um, they've dealt with the pandemic, they've dealt with their own loss and grief, and, you know, they've come out better for it. We all have, and we're excited to move forward. Can you explain what life was like before that first Westchester game where you had to calm the troops down and, ex and just process the loss of Ryan Smith? It was emotional. As <laughs> all I can say is it was emotional. Um, you know, everybody handles grief differently. But um, I would say we were a little distracted. But um, I think we played much better the second time that we played them without that there. But um, like I said, I know we will be prepared and uh, angry and hungry next time we see them. As a coach, do you get great deal of pleasure in seeing that these young ladies are going to have careers that are going to really help our society, especially during this pandemic. Yeah, we have a lot of nurses on this team, a lot of people who are going to give back to our local communities and, um, you know, be on the front lines if this were ever to happen again, or just the front lines every day. So, yeah, we're very proud of those young women who, again, ugh, balance, balance a nursing major, playing a Division II college sport. Um, it's impressive. Do you expect a uh, competitive, crazy uh, scrimmage tonight? Oh, it should be a good one. I'm excited uh, for the young guns to showcase their talent. We're going to have a lot of fun. Coach, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the season, and we'll see what the evening breaks. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for your time. That's Zinni Barocco's Yoder, head coach of the ESU women's lacrosse team. It is a senior night here at Ida Martin Stadium. We're going to take a quick break and come back with the festivities. You are watching a presentation of ESU lacrosse seniors.
the way we intended tonight, but we are thankful that you are here so we can recognize warriors who have done unprecedented things in unprecedented times. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you direct your attention to the field as we honor the class of 2021, as well as a couple of members from the class of 2020 who did not have the opportunity for their own senior day one year ago. We will begin with Michelle Dyke. Michelle posted a four and one record in the cage during her career at ESU. She earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from ESU in 2020. Michelle is now working at the Water Gap Treatment Center as a wellness coordinator. She is also pursuing a master's degree in interdisciplinary studies from the University of South Dakota. She is joined today by her mother, Stephanie. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Dyke. Our next honoree also for the class of 2020 is Megan Illis. Megan made 18 appearances during her tenure as a warrior. She earned a bachelor's degree in exercise science as an athletic director's honor roll and dean's list student. She is currently pursuing a master's in clinical exercise physiology from ESU. Joining her today on the field are her parents, Linda and Frank. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Illis. And ladies and gentlemen, one last round of applause for the class of 2020. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our 2021 seniors. Our first honoree is Kristen Andracek. Kristen has started in 55 games during her time here, recording 56 cause turnovers and scooping up 80 ground balls. She is a biology major, and she has earned athletic director's honor roll in all four years. Today, she is joined by Tara and John Andracek. Ladies and gentlemen, number 18, Kristen Andracek. Our next senior is Hannah Cicerell. And this senior has been on a tear as of late in the ESU record book. The two-time PSAC East Athlete of the Week has recorded 159 goals and 85 assists for 244 points in her career here. She stands just nine points away from becoming ESU's all-time points leader and currently ranks third in program history in goals and second in assists. She earned a bachelor's degree in nursing from ESU and is currently pursuing a master's degree in health education. She is joined by Denise Becton, Lee Becton, Tom Cicerell, and Jody Brush. Ladies and gentlemen, number 11, Hannah Cicerell. Our next senior is Brielle Curtis. Brielle has scored nine goals this season. The name of State College has contributed 34 points in her career here. A public health major, she has earned Dean's List honors on six occasions. Joining her today are her parents, Richard Curtis and Janine Antonitis. Put your hands together for number four, Brielle Curtis. Our next honoree is Shannon Dent. She is from Ronkonkoma, New York and has found the back of the cage 53 times in 50 games during her time here. She has totaled 89 points in four seasons. She is majoring in communication sciences and disorders and has made the Dean's List on four occasions. Today, Shannon is joined by Laura and Connor Dent. Ladies and gentlemen, number 12, Shannon Dent. Our next senior has served as a student assistant for three seasons after playing for the Warriors during her freshman season. Her name is Emily DiGiovanni. She's a native of Saddlebrook, New Jersey, 
and has earned a bachelor's degree in psychology and is currently pursuing a master's in communications. She's joined today by her parents, Mike and Sharon. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Emily DiGiovanni. Our next senior is Gianna LaDuke. She has supplied 72 points in 41 games over the course of her time as a Warrior. This season, she ranks second on the team in assists and third in points. A Dean's List and Athletic Director Honor Roll recipient, LaDuke majors in Communication Science and Disorders. She is joined by her parents, Dean and Michael, as well as her brother, Austin. Ladies and gentlemen, number eight, Gianna LaDuke. Up next is Bailey McMaster. Bailey has scored 14 of her 31 goals in her career through 10 games this season. She was named PSAC East Athlete of the Week on March 16th after leading ESU with seven goals through the first two games of the season. She is a health and physical education major. Today, she is joined by her mother, Joanne, her father, Jim, and her brother, Hunter. Ladies and gentlemen, number one. Bailey McMaster. Up next, Krista Mitterratonda. You can find her name throughout the ESU record books. She has recorded 147 goals and 176 points, both of which rank in the top 10 in school history. In 2019, she became the first Warrior to register multiple 60-goal seasons. Over the last four years, she has garnered All-American, All-Region, and All-PSAC honors on several different occasions. She is a sport management major. Krista today is joined by Nick Mitterratonda, Bridget Mitterratonda, and Emily Mitterratonda. Ladies and gentlemen, number 26, Krista Mitterratonda. Our next senior is Madison Mulligan. Madison has made 66 starts in 70 games she's played. As a defender, she has caused 18 turnovers and grabbed 66 ground balls. In the classroom, she earned Dean's List every semester as an exercise science major. She is currently pursuing a master's in the same field. Madison today is joined by her parents, Mike and Lynn. Ladies and gentlemen, number six, Madison Mulligan. Up next is the goalie, Tatiana Petaway. She is one of the best goalkeepers to ever play at ESU and has recorded 710 saves in her career, which currently ranks second all-time at ESU and 10th all-time in NCAA Division II competition. She is a two-time All-American and was named U.S. Lacrosse Magazine Division II Preseason Goalkeeper of the Year this season. She has a Warrior record of 54-14, and 14, guiding ESU to its first PSAC Championship, its first NCAA Tournament appearance, an Atlantic Region title, and national semifinalist appearance throughout her career. She led the nation in save percentage in 2019 and ranked second among all active goalkeepers at any level of collegiate lacrosse in career saves. Petaway earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and psychology and is currently pursuing a master's degree in management and leadership. She is joined today by Yolanda and Rafael. Ladies and gentlemen, number 34, Tatiana Petaway. Our final honoree is Kaylee Pokrivka. In 46 games, Pokrivka has caused an impressive 99 turnovers and brought in 135 ground balls. Her 49 caused turnovers as a freshman are the second most by a Warrior in a single season. She is more than just a Dean's List student. She is the 2020-21 ESE Student Athlete Advisory Committee Secretary. And she is a nursing major. 
Today, she is escorted by Martin and Jill Pokrivka. Ladies and gentlemen, number 13, Kaylee Pokrivka. Warriors fans, one last round of applause for this tremendous senior class of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you tonight for joining us for this historic occasion. Again, it's not exactly how we planned, but as any Barocco's Yoder pointed out, everybody's had to adjust, and that's been the scene, I think, all across the board as we continue to adjust and just try to get through what we're getting through right now. Again, this team has a road game coming up on Saturday against Shepard, but we'll have a final regular season home game on Wednesday against Shippensburg. That will be at White Knight Field. This team... Looks like it's got some wins left. An incredibly talented and dedicated senior class of 2021 for the ESU Women's Lacrosse Program. For our entire crew here at Ida Martin Stadium, I'm Nikolai Busco.